Hey guys, welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today I have a new episode of Unboxing Boxes. I'm not actually sure what episode number we're up to at this point, but I'll work that out afterwards. Uh, but yeah, I haven't done one of these for a few weeks now, uh, which we were doing it every week, and yeah, it took a bit of a break, you know, New Year's and all that sort of stuff. But, uh, and I did go away for a short holiday, but anyway, now I've got back to it, and there's quite a few boxes. This is about half the boxes I have to get through at the moment. But uh, some of these products I have to use this week, so I thought it's probably a good time to unbox them. So anyway, let's get to it. I'll probably uh, we'll move this big box out of the way and probably save that for last. Whoop. And I think this one here looks like a good starting point. Just move this little one. All right exciting getting back into the unboxing boxes and I don't know what happened to my multi-tool uh, with the knife on it it's somewhere in the office but anyway I couldn't find it so I've just got a steak knife all right here we go okay ah very cool What we have here, awesome. I've been dying to get my hands on these boards, particularly this one, which I'll get to in a moment why. All right, I suppose I should probably take this board out of the box while we talk about it. Uh, but it is the Azrock Fatality Z27T <laughs> Performance, uh, professional rather, professional gaming. So that's the Fatality Z270 Professional Gaming i7, so it's a bit of a mouthful. So yeah, they've just got, well, Z270 Gaming i7. You can probably drop the fatality part. We've got a screw for the M.2 slot, some SATA cables, high bandwidth SLI bridge, more M.2 screws, a uh, pair of aerials, so you must have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on this board, cool I.O. shield, more SATA cables, uh, si standard single link, SLI bridge and a, a postcard. So if you plan on going on a trip with your motherboard to celebrate buying it, you can send a, a card back home. Uh, anyway, this is all we really care about. So it looks very similar to the uh, Z270 Gaming K6 board that we've already looked at, or I'm using for testing anyway. Uh, very similar, but some differences are you get a pair of M2 slots here stacked, uh, one after the other, along with a third here, so that's three Ultra M.2 ports. That's that's pretty insane. You could get, I suppose, three Samsung 960 Pro one terabyte drives, or, yeah, does that come in two terabyte? Anyway, that would be, that would be awesome. Uh, overkill, really, but... Yeah, why not? Um, and what is really cool about this board, which I can't test right now, but I am really, really, really keen to get to, is the 5 gigabit LAN connection, which uses your standard RJ45 Cat6 cables. So, you know, that's five times faster than the gigabit connection, of which there are two as well on this board. So you get a pair of two gigabit LAN connections, which do use Intel LAN controllers or LAN chips, and then the 5 gigabit chip, which I'm not actually sure what drives that. I don't know a whole lot about it yet, apart from the fact that this board has it, and I can't test it, but I'm happy to have it. <laughs> um, and yeah, you get a, there's a M, another, there's a fourth uh, M.2 slot, which is occupied by a Wi-Fi card. So that's an 802.11 AC Wi-Fi card with Bluetooth support. So that's pretty cool right out of the box. So the networking on this board is pretty insane. You also get uh, USB 3.1 Type-C and Type-A. Um, what else have we got? Your standard output ports. You get the Sound Blaster Cinema 3 audio, which is a very high-end audio solution using uh, the, the new Realtek ALC. I think it's the 1220 codec. I'd have to check that. Don't quote me, but I think that's it. And you get the um, EM shielding and... Uh, added like the steel, uh, what do we call them, the steel shields around the PCI Express slots, which stops them from flexing and also provides a bit of EM shielding or EMI um, shielding. So that's pretty cool. There's a USB 3 header on the board, plenty of SATA ports, a pair of SATA Express ports, but you're never going to use those. 
And yeah, this has all the, uh, I think it's the Aura lighting they call it. Or is that Gigabyte? I might be getting a bit, my wires crossed there. But anyway, that's a cool, cool motherboard. And I don't know the price in US or Aussie markets. Um, it's yet to be released, this board. So yeah, given the, the 5 gigabit Ethernet on it, I'm very keen to see what they price this board at. Yeah, so anyway, that's cool. And then of course we have the Z270 Tai Chi model. Uh, and I have the X99 Tai Chi, tai Chi Tai Chi board that we used in that Core P3 build. Um, and yeah, still in use today, obviously. And that's an awesome board, really like it. This one looks very similar. You've got the sort of the, the gearing work design on the PCB, if you can see that. Um, and yeah, it's the 270 version. So it's actually, uh, it's sort of positioned as a high-end but budget-friendly board. And the, the pricing's pretty good. It's 240 US, which given the feature set, I think is pretty reasonable, or that works out to be about 330 Aussie. Um, and compared to this board, you get many of the same features as the, uh, the gaming i7 version, but that five gigabit LAN unfortunately has been dropped and the, uh, creative audio or the cinema three audio has been changed for purity sound four. So not, not a huge downgrade. Um, and yeah, you still get the three, you still get those three M.2 uh, ports. You get the, uh, it is aura RGB lighting. Uh, you get a 12 phase power design. You get those steel slots for the uh, PCIe Time 16, USB 3.1, and all that good stuff, the Wi-Fi and all that sort of stuff, the M.2 Intel Wi-Fi adapter. So yeah, very cool board, and I'll probably end up reviewing that at some point or feature it in a build, who knows. Uh, I'll get onto this sort of ragged looking box. Looks like it's had a bit of a leak. Ah yes, this is the final piece to my The Tower 900 puzzle. Uh, hopefully you guys saw uh, my video or the explaining all the bits and bobs that are gonna go into the Tower 900 build, which if you can see is just here. Um, and yeah, this is the VGA block for the GTX 1070 that's going to go into that build. So the Pacific V GTX 10 series Founders Edition block and I'll be whacking that on a Founders Edition GeForce graphics card. So yeah, that's pretty cool. We've seen this on the channel before. We used the same block for the Core P3 build, which used a GTX 1080. It's a very, very impressive looking block. So there you go. All nice and shiny. The liquid flowing through here looks really cool. I'm not actually sure what color liquid I'll be using for that part of the loop because I'll be using two separate loops for that build. So the CPU and the GPU will be on two separate loops and the liquids will be black and white. Actually, the other day I finally got the black liquid, which I've been waiting for. And I did unbox this without you guys. Not something I'm proud of. So just got me in a weak moment and I had to check it out. And yeah, it's, it's black liquid. Kind of looks like oil, used oil. Um, but anyway, that's going to be pretty cool. Part two of that will be coming up probably later this week. All right, let's dive into this one quickly. What do we have here? A Gigabyte headset. Okay, so I know it's not their first headset ever, but it's not something you often see from Gigabyte. The Extreme Gaming XH300 gaming headset. Um, I have to say it looks pretty cool on the box and you'll all be relieved to know that it, it is RGB, so. You know, it's a gaming product then. I'm running out of places to throw things. Okay, so you've got like a fabric cable tie with the Extreme Gaming name on it. You get an Extreme Gaming badge, which is pretty cool. And I suppose that's just a little manual. I have no idea what the price of these is going to be set at. Uh, I don't believe they're on sale yet. How does this work? No, I didn't. I don't think I broke it. Alright, for some reason it rotates easily now. Uh, what have we got? What have we got here? Unless I'm missing something, I can't see which is meant to be left and right. I'd guess that the mic is on the left side, but being that they're completely around and very symmetrical on this folds either way. All right, well, let's move on. I'd say they go on this way. Okay, they're not over here, but they feel comfortable after a very, very short fitting. The mic is, uh, 
bendy, pliable. Well, that's pretty cool. I haven't actually done any research yet, so I'm just sort of guessing here. But it looks like you can either use it via USB or the old-fashioned way with the audio jack. So I'm not 100% sure if that's true or that this could just be for the lighting. So you may have to use them both together. Uh, if we review it, obviously all those details will be revealed. And here you just have an on-off button. I don't know if that's just for the mic or the whole headset. Um, yeah, not really that clear. It just says on or off. And what I imagine is a volume wheel for the, the headphones themselves. But yeah, I mean, they're, they're pretty comfortable. They're light. They um, look to stay on pretty well. Um, they look quite good. Decent. Um, they, they're kind of light and plasticky feeling, but I have no idea what the price is, so it's hard to criticize them for that. But anyway, Gigabyte's new Extreme Gaming headset. Uh, more to come shortly, I'm sure. All right, we're getting through this pretty well. Time for a small box. Ah, uh, that's quite funny, actually. <laughs> I just went and bought one of these the other day. The G4560, the new Pentium processor with hyperthreading, the KB Lake model. That's quite funny. I bought one of these because there's quite a few tests I want to do with it. And yeah, I'm pretty sure I bought the 4560 model. That's probably, I think that's the only one available at the moment. But anyway, I have two of these now, so that's cool, I suppose. Um, I might use one in a build and the other one I'll use for benchmarking. But anyway, that's, yeah, very popular processor at the moment. I can't remember the pricing off the top of my head, but it's like 80 Aussie for this processor. It runs at, I think, 3.5 yeah, 3 gigahertz, 3 megabyte level cache. cache. Uh, and yeah, it's a KB Lake processor. It's essentially a Core i3 because it has hyper-threading. So two cores, four threads because of the hyper-threading support. So yeah, interesting. I don't know why Intel's done that. They've made that you've got Core i3 models, obviously they all, ha all the Core i3s have hyper-threading and the lowest tier model drops down from the four megabyte level three to the uh, three megabyte level three. And then all the Pentiums are the same with a three megabyte level three. They're just clocked, you know, 100, 200 megahertz lower. So they're essentially Core i3s now. Um, yeah, but with lower prices and lower clock speeds. So that's good. Alrighty, two left to go, and I'm pretty sure I know what these are. Both Corsair packages. I mentioned it a little while ago on the channel in some video, I can't recall now. But basically Corsair approached me and they wanted to sponsor our new uh, Core i7 KB Lake test machine, which I primarily use for testing GPUs, but can also be used from time to time to test CPUs, even though I have a sort of separate system for doing that. But yeah, they wanted to sponsor that system, provide the case, power supply, cooling, uh, storage, uh, what else was there? Uh, memory, of course. So yeah, I said, why not? I'm more than happy to let you guys provide all the gear for that. i version 2 uh, all-in-one liquid cooler. And this is a product I can recommend because I've used it. Well, I've, I think I've used the version 2 in one system and the version, the original version, I've got, uh, I've got about two or three of those units in different systems. And they're awesome. They're really good quality. I haven't had a single problem with them yet. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to sticking this in the new KB Lake Core i7 7700K test system. Keep that thing cool. Hopefully it can keep it really cool at like, what, 4.9 gigahertz. So that would probably, the 6700K I test at 4.5 gigahertz. And the new system I might wind up to, yeah, 4.8 or 4.9. Um, if I can get it really stable and running at reasonable, respectable temperatures at 4.9, that's what I'll go with. Uh, my processor does that on 1.3 volts, and you can get it. You can get it working at f uh, five gigahertz in Windows and benchmarking. It seems stable, but it runs really hot even with a liquid cooler. So, yeah, I don't know if that's what I'll be going for long term. But anyway, oh, this one's heavy, so must be a power supply. Yep, it's a power supply. We have the RMX. 750 watt or RM 750X rather um, and yeah that's a power supply that I have never used before so I don't know a whole lot about but uh, I can guess that it'll be expensive high quality and work quite well <laughs> and yeah 750 watt will be way more than we're going to ever need uh, in the graphics card benchmark system I think you could 
probably get away with running a pair of Titan XP cards off that with an overclocked Core i7 processor. Your power draw would be around 600 watts there, so I mean, it's getting up there, but what's this thing? What is it rated at? 80 plus gold. Okay. But yeah, that would be more than enough to run that pretty safely over a long period of time, I would say. Oh, <laughs> I'm getting all carried away thinking we're done. And the big box I stuck down here is still sitting there. What have we got here? Well, so far I can tell you it's a red box and it has things that would suggest it's something to do with audio. Well, it's upside down. Sound Blaster X Katana. Actually, you probably can't hear me very well with that in the way. Sound Blaster X Katana. I don't know much about this. Uh, Creative's new sound bar. It's not on sale yet in the US or Australia as far as I know, but the Creative store suggests a retail price of 300 US, which is quite expensive, but uh, it all depends on the quality of the sound bar. From what I've been told, it's extremely high quality. It's 75 watt RMS, so it's gonna have some punch about it. Yeah, so I won't go into too much detail about that one right now because I don't have all the facts and figures in front of me, but there will be a review on this on the channel shortly, so I won't bother unboxing it now um, and drag this out any longer. But yeah, I think this will be a pretty cool product. So that was quite a productive unboxing boxes episode. We got two really awesome motherboards. Uh, really interested to test this one, although I can't at the moment. I either have to get another board and probably use a crossover cable or get a switch that will support this thing. But yeah, I'm really keen to test that five gigabit ethernet. Um, I mean, you can safely assume it's going to be five times faster than what you get out of a gigabit connection, uh, providing you have the storage that can handle, you know, that kind of uh, performance to and from on both systems. But yeah, that's going to be cool to test. Uh, we got the Final piece of the puzzle for the Tower 900 builds, that's going to be great. Crave speaker, which I'll have to do a lot of testing, playing around with, listening to music, and then we can eventually review that. Pretty much the same goes for this, probably do a bit of gaming. Um, might catch up with Brian from Techia yes City over the weekend and play some games, so that'll be cool. Um, and then these guys for the KB Lake Core i7 build, very keen to get them in the system, get that built. There'll probably be a video of that. Uh, the th only thing I'm waiting for on that is actually the case. I've got everything from Corsair. Uh, they, there was some problem with the case. They've custom ordered that, uh, locally from a shop and I'll probably have that later this week. Um, so then I can get that video done for the following week. Um, and then this, this guy, which, uh, I, well, since I already had it, I probably have some content on the channel by the time you see this. I'm not sure. It depends on how everything goes, but I am right now, as we speak, uh, working on a big, huge, uh, benchmark comparison for this, which will be probably coming up next week. And that'll be comparing gaming performance in like 16 games against the Core i3, Core i5 and Core i7. So that will be worth checking out. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. Anyway, that does it for this episode of Unboxing Boxes. Hope you enjoyed uh, seeing all this new hardware uh, arrive. And yeah, there'll be more of it to come. So I'll catch you guys later.